Welcome back to Affiliated, everybody. We've got the friend of the podcast now, Ed Scow, joining us here live. We flew out the ClickBank jet to Nebraska and flew back here. So <laughs> thanks for joining us, Ed. My pleasure. Where's and the ClickBank jet picking up? Yeah, next time. Next time. But <laughs> you'll get a double diamond. No. And then uh, Kyle Kasechka joining us as always as co-host. Thanks, Kyle. Ed, we're stoked to have you back. Thank you for coming back just for this interview. So we're going to call it. That's what I'm claiming it anyway. Yep. But only reason. Yeah. I will say I love that um, Thomas and I's qualifier to be a friend of ours is to spend time with us twice. Yes. Because <laughs> anytime yeah. you could see the deal be on the first hangout for me, I'm like, oh, must be a friend. <laughs> so. People always joke with me like, you should call everyone your friend. I'm like, well, I'm desperate. So. <laughs> yeah, it works out. But Ed, we're excited to have you back. And you've obviously been in the industry for a long time. You've seen a lot. You've done a ton millions and millions of business across email and all different kinds of traffic sources. Um, and we're just really curious to pick your brain some more, or I learned to not use that phrase. I was told <laughs> I should say, tap into your genius. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's a pet peeve. When yeah. somebody sends me an email, like, can, can I pick, pick your brain? Yeah. No, Quick question. that sounds like really rough. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> pick my brain. You just throw out an absorbent <laughs> yeah. consulting fee for people that do right. that. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have done that. Like charge $4,000 an hour. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm actually only 10 minutes. It's still four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that's the flat minute. That's a start. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a. But to tap into your genius here on some marketing topics, I'd love to kick it off a little bit. Just kind of going into, I think people felt a lot of shifts this year, right? COVID's mm -hmm. not gone, but people pretend it is. Lots of unrest everywhere. iOS, Apple, Facebook fights, all kinds of things going on. Mm -hmm. On your email front lines, with all the emails you're sending and controlling on a daily basis, where are you seeing the trends happen right now? Well, the summer slowdown did actually kick back in this year. Um, like once COVID hit, the summer slowdown did not, it, like it ramped up. It was like a historical Q1, pretty much through the entirety of 2020 and, <laughs> and including 2021, at least for us. But yeah, the things kind of started to get back to normal in terms of the summer slowdown this year. We kind of anticipated that because you could see it start to happen. And then when it hit, I was like, Ugh, it sucks. And so you know, people were reaching out like, hey, is this like, are you guys seeing this too? And they like, yeah, it's, it's back to normal. Like this is, this is what happens just stop opening emails or just well, conversions go down? I think, is it just yes to all um, the above? Yeah. People, I think a lot of it had to do with people traveling more. Mm -hmm. Like people were just like antsy to get out. And so they just weren't responding to, you know, buying a, a book on diabetes or, you know, buying a supplement on something they were they were doing other things they were just they're busy because they have lives again uh, and so like that's part of it and that's always kind of an issue with summer too is that school's out people just aren't paying as much of attention to to at least things in the health space but then also because of the funkiness that's going on right now the survival space is really starting to kick back up mm, you know okay. like i remember back in 08 09 that was the same thing and kind of ran the gamut with all sorts of different survival stuff. Didn't get too heavy into political, like calling people out politically, because that's, that's a little bit too divisive for, for our comfort levels. Uh, but the survival space is coming back in a big way. And we've seen some really good offers, like playing on the worries of the economy and just, you know, the uncertainty of what's going to happen. And so, yeah, so they're buying a, a book on <laughs> on, on, how to, on how to prepare. On how to not yeah. <laughs> to survive. Yeah. survive. How to survive. How to survive. Yeah. yeah. So um, those, those are the two biggies was that like this is kind of getting back to normal in terms of what you can gauge how months are going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then just the survival space is starting to kick back up just because of what's going on, the funkiness of what's going on. And so that's going to be really interesting to see since it's an election year too, like how, how the rest of the year is going to play out. Well, I was gonna say, did y'all see the like Shopify earnings report that they were showing, like the growth trend? Mm -hmm. You would see that they were showing like because right when COVID hit, they're like, oh, this dragged e-commerce forward five years, and people thought it was gonna be like this spike, and then just kind of continue from there, just five years in the future. Mm -hmm. But what they're kind of seeing is that we're kind of dropping back to the median growth line that was expected. Right. Like it's probably will probably be a bit higher than that still, but it's like yeah, e-commerce was dragged forward quite a bit because of COVID. Everyone jumped online. And yeah, now, like you said, we're kind of getting back to normal a little bit. Kind of like so the people, housing market. Yeah, right? So everything's kind of slowed, people right. inflation, all that. They're like, hmm. Right. <laughs> well, more regular behavior, right? I think it's funny. Yeah. It's almost we should think less of recession and more regression. Mm -hmm. Regression back to the mean is what we'd be seeing. Mm -hmm. With still, I think, change behaviors, not so you'd um, argue the learning. Actually, one thing I wanted to ask you on with the survival stuff, Ed, 
So I know way back, kind of around that 08, 09 time, one of the big things too was a lot of free free plus shipping was really big. Mm -hmm. um, then of course, a lot of like religious VSLs around the end of the world. Some of my favorite television is good old survival <laughs> right. VSL, right? Exactly. Um, but is, is that what you're seeing with the new offers? Is kind of going back to free plus shipping or um, the structure of the offers, are they a little bit different now? They're more, the ones that I'm seeing do well and the ones that I'm seeing kind of come down the pipeline are not free plus shipping. You know, they're not like the credit card knife and stuff like that that used to be huge. Uh, they're actual offers, like books on how to prepare. Like, more information like info products. products. More, yeah, yeah, info products, which is interesting because that's been on a downward trend, info products themselves. I mean, you yeah. guys can see it on your own platform. Mm -hmm. well, What's funny, been happening? Yeah. Info products going down, supplements shooting through the roof mm -hmm. because it's you know a fifty dollar AOV versus a hundred and fifty dollar AOV is a big difference. Yeah, one yeah. can afford to buy right. m many more customers. Yeah. Right. Well, because we looked at that data trend actually, because that's what we thought. We're like, oh digital's gone down or info's gone down. It actually hasn't. It's actually grown, maintained, it's continued to grow year over year, mm. every year. Just physical's grown that much more that yeah. it looks like okay. it's almost taken over. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, it's still a big part of the pie, just physical and supplements became a much bigger part of the pie. Right, <laughs> yeah. Well, it does seem like info shifted to where, well, some of the shifts you've seen to maintain success, and I think one of the reasons why info is totally popular is if you could have a personality in front of info, it lasts so much longer. Yeah. You can change your marketing works. I think a lot of the supplements, those AOVs make it very easy to buy media. Yeah. Um, especially with what happened to CPMs over in two thousand, you know, twenty one, um, verse twenty twenty and now. Um, you almost need that AOV to get any scale on on some of these tier one networks. Yeah. So but yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, the rise of info products again. I know. So. It's kinda nice. And yeah. like even started seeing more text sales letters start to come back and convert again, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Cause I've always, I've always liked text sales letters better, at least from a, from a marketer's perspective, a, like as a, like from the vendor's perspective, because mm -hmm. there's so many more things that you can split test a lot quicker, a lot easier mm -hmm. versus a VSL or you, know, you have your, you can test headlines and stuff on the page, but it's a lot more difficult to test things with the video itself. Yeah. It's, it's not cost prohibitive versus a, a text sales letter. Like, Oh, I'm going to test a different, CTA, I want to test different buy buttons, I want to test this, I want to test that. You can do it just boom, boom, boom. Um, but it's nice to see some tech sales that are starting to convert again. And you've seen them convert on par to what the VSLs are yeah. kind of doing too? Yeah. yeah, it's still, like VSLs are still obviously the biggest, mm -hmm. but starting to see some more text-based letters that are doing that are, that are doing on par, like they can continue to run them and, and still do well. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's good to hear. I was trying to push people, like, should we do a VSL or a TSL? And it's like, well, VSLs typically do better, but if this is your first offer or your first number of offers, right. start text, right? Because <laughs> yeah. for all those reasons you just said, right? Yeah, yeah it's so cost yeah. prohibitive. Plus, I don't yeah. know if it's just because there's so much gray hair at this table, primarily contributed by myself, but um, <laughs> it, there's something from looking at text sales later, we almost see the copy. <laughs> Scroll through and read stuff. I just love it. I've always enjoyed it. It's so much better than having. Just want to hold a book, right? It's like these Kindles are I want ridiculous. Direct, I want I want direct sales letters in the mail. Okay, like, boomer. Yeah. yeah. I need it. I need it in my life. So. But no, I get it too because like in copy, like in the copy world, that was always the things. Like the whole goal was to get somebody to read the next line with the yeah. tech sales letter. It's like that's that's the entire goal. Read the next line. Just keep going. Keep going. That's your whole goal. And it's different with the VSL than it is. Than, than yeah, the different, yeah. different art form almost, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, Especially these days. Do you yeah. think the rise of info, if we'll call it that, do you think that's somewhat because supply chain might still be so cattywampus that it's hard to get a credit card knife at scale? I think we need to pause for a second on cattywampus because that was just, <laughs> you threw it out what? there like it's common knowledge. <laughs> that's, but, a, or, that's a thing. Oh, it's great. I just, <laughs> I just normally say cattywampus with a different voice, like cattywampus or something like that. So not <laughs> to derail the question. The, young, the youngsters won't know what that <laughs> means. But yeah, especially in the supplement world, there's, I think it's getting better, but there was a time where, I don't know if it was anybody on ClickBank, but some offers off of ClickBank, the vendors would reach out like, hey, you can't promote, like we, yeah, we can't source this mm -hmm. ingredient, we can't source that ingredient. Um, and it's on, like, we don't know when we're going to get well, it in. It was like the cap of the bottle was right. out, right? It was Which just is really everything weird. was out. Yeah. yeah. I even had somebody at a bar tell me that they couldn't get tequila in. They were playing oh, supply no. chain issues. And they said that the, the tequila company could not source lids. Like, she's, oh, like, wow. she's, she's like, this is a unique lid. And they say they can't get it in. And so they can't ship anything out. I'm like, so they're just like storing. <laughs> like it's <laughs> ran wrap over the bottle. Right. Like, it's like, <laughs> big yeah. like. 
Ed's like, I don't need to edit this right. cap anyway. Yeah. Like, where is the tequila pool I could swim? <laughs> I was listening to an NPR podcast, and there's like a, the Port of Angeles at the peak when they're backed up had, which is like 60 or 70 percent of the shipments that come through the U.S. economy come from the Port of Angeles, right? Mm-hmm. And it was like there were 120 boats were just waiting, sitting there, and now they're down to like 20. So mm-hmm. it's not over, but mm-hmm. things have gotten better right yeah. but there's still that friction of this whole supply chain and stuff like that but yeah that was always wild to, to hear too like people like oh like if you're you have a supplement that has 15 different ingredients in it but we can't you can't sell it you can't market it because we can't get one right. we can't get this one ingredient in and so you can't and it's a very important ingredient we, like so our, you can't promote yeah. it yeah it's like all right that's kind of weird or um like from a vendor side we're still predominantly where we are um in terms of iRally, info products, physical mm-hmm. books, that sort of thing. And um, our fulfillment company, our printing and fulfillment company would reach out and like, hey, you know, you've got, you have 10,000 books here, but uh, just looking at it, if you place an order today for another, you know, 50,000 or whatever, it's gonna take five months. Oh, your cool. lead time is just because they were, out, yeah. Because they couldn't get paper. Oh, jeez. I was like, and I was like, you can't get, is that because of the lumber supply? They just was blame so high? like everything yeah. was just like everything supply was, chain yeah. issues. Like we don't know what's going on. Supply chain <laughs> issues. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you can't get paper. That doesn't make any sense. How can you not get paper? I'm like we don't know. But this is what like this is how <laughs> this is what's going on. I'm like okay, I guess you will place an order now and hopefully it's in. Like hopefully we don't run out and like have to take the sales pages down. And we never did have that issue. But I just thought that was another interesting thing. Like paper was an issue. Paper. But you don't Where's have that. Michael you don't have that issue with PDFs. No supply, chain, no supply yeah. chain issues with PDFs. True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just have to worry about the internet. So we had some right. supply chain issues in Canada when the internet went down, but easily recovered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so actually going back on that too. So for that survival offer or the survival offer you're starting to see, are they purely digital or are they using flat media? Kind of like what we've seen from like Lost Ways um, and some of those offers where they'll do a combination of book and digital. Yeah, it's book and digital. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to check and see. So. Yep. So yeah. it's still always good yeah. to have something. I feel like yeah. you almost have to do book and digital now just so you avoid the refunds of everyone buying, thinking, right. yeah. I thought this was a book. Yeah, because <laughs> especially like the yeah. age demos that yeah. all of us go after, mm-hmm. they, people still don't, in that demographic, I'm not going to disparage anybody, but in that demographic, so many of them still don't understand what a PDF is. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought I was getting a book like, for free. <laughs> it's not, it's, in this economy? Yeah. <laughs> I can't even get paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely. Well, and I think it's funny because you see, I remember like seeing that what people do, actually seeing my grandfather do this. My like, grandfather, he would, he'd buy PDFs or get them and print them out at like Kinko's and put them in like a binder. Yeah. And send me, like, or sometimes just a folder of loose leaf papers like, here, read this book. And it's like, okay. So, yeah. This, so it's, this it, cost you $50 to print out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, interesting. So you definitely having that flat media makes a ton of sense. So, yeah. and I remember even talking with the, the Savas with Lost Ways, they even said the big thing when they did that was most people didn't actually want to read the book. They just wanted to put it on a shelf somewhere in, in the event needed. something happened. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it was really more of like a dictionary or an encyclopedia, um, which all the Gen Zers don't know what I'm talking about, but um, that was a thing. So um, as a research, Wikipedia in a book form. Yeah. So on that, so given that you're seeing the the rise in the info products, I'm kind of talking some other trends, and being that we did mention VSLs, uh, you know. I wanted to ask if you've been seeing any different trends specifically around VSLs. I know we've seen some different types pop up recently with more like the podcast lead VSL. Um, you know, interview style seems to be coming back as well and, and mm-hmm. making a rise. So just curious if you're maybe seeing some trends outside, kind of I would say in the last couple of years, what has been big is obviously the very dramatic mm-hmm. cinema, cinema oh, what is it? Cinematic? Cinematic, yes. Cinematronic. I was like, I was yeah, like trying to make a new like word. Like sirens going <laughs> on. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, yeah. A cinema yeah, boom. Boop. Robot. Boop. Yeah. Right. No, yeah, that five-second yeah. countdown. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, if you're seeing any other trends outside of what, what's been working. So a couple things there. A, I've been doing this so long that I cannot watch a VSL. <laughs> I get 15, 20 seconds in, and I'm like, I, I, I can't do this. It, and some of them just make me feel dirty, but I'll still promote it. It's like, like I just can't, I can't watch it because you've you know, seen so many over the years. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, I don't have to watch it. Like some of you guys have to watch them for, <laughs> for compliance. I'm in the same um, boat now. I'm like, like what's right. new in VSLs? I'm like, right. I couldn't tell you. Like, yeah, here's I, the data behind it. Like right this there. morning, I, I was setting up an email, and I even I, 
uh, for a friend and or it was our list and it was for a friend's offer that we promoted many times and I, I clicked play and I like this person like I genuinely enjoy this person's company and I got 10 seconds in I'm like I can't listen to you anymore and, <laughs> and so I just had to like x out like like I, it works okay um but yeah so things have changed it's, it's been interesting to watch the the evolution of VSLs you know back from you know, when Mike first did the Truth About Abs one, the doodle, mm-hmm. the doodle thing, that was yep. revolutionary. And then, you know, things kind of progressed. And yeah, then they do, the big thing was the countdown timer. Five, four, three, oh, yeah. two, you know. Um, or the PowerPoint slides, which is still kind of a thing. Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that'll do like a five minute theatrical intro that's pulls in all the hooks and all the fancy fanciness and the noises and the bright pictures. And then they'll go and do just a regular PowerPoint presentation which Golden Hippo kind of was their bread and butter. They would do an yeah. intro with Gundry and then just go right into a PowerPoint presentation for the rest of it. Um, you know, and then now there's the, the, there's a lot of them that are just, they, they try to be shock and awe, uh, shaming people, which is really kind of, I'm, I'm really hoping and I'm kind of sensing that people aren't responding to the shamey stuff anymore, the shamey, like the first 15, 20 seconds of a VSL being super shameful to people. Yeah. You know, because like we talked about yesterday when I was here too, like negative obviously works in sales copy. Mm-hmm. It's the easiest thing. You know, we can have a conversation and you not respond to like, I'm not going to call you out. Like, you know, you have gray in your beard, you know, but. <laughs> hey, I forgot. It's not video. No, yeah, you know. <laughs> I have a ton of gray in my yeah, beard too. Yeah. You know, but if the person is just sitting there watching it, they will respond to the negative. But I think I think it's kind of tipped. It's reached a tipping point where it's just it feels too much. Mm. And I think that there's a lot of people, and there's a lot of advertising platforms too that'll come back and say you can't run this because it's like it just it's just too greasy. Yeah, you know? and I know like Tabula was pushing back on some ad creatives for like teeth, and they're like, like you can't show like mm-hmm. there's like a, some guy flossing with like his teeth look terrible, right? Like right. you can't show this. It's like too yeah. like they want it that pleasant, more pleasant experience, right. right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's 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 going to be interesting to see how that plays out because I do think it just especially because of the climate that we're in, kind of in general, there's so much negativity, mm-hmm. and I think that people are just getting sick of it and they want a little bit of positivity, um, and so I th- I think. I could be wrong. I've been wrong about a lot of things. Um, but I do think that that's, we're starting to get to the end of that hyper shamey hook, hyper shamey lead. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm calling people a whale. <laughs> you know, I've yeah. obviously promoted the hell out of that offer, but every time, like, every time I clicked on the video, I was like, oh, God, this makes me feel so bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I think uh, I, even when you go back to that climate side, I think that's a big piece too, where finding a different way to yeah. you know bring in information keep people engaged i also think the other side to it is it's you run it long enough people start to realize it's an ad too soon too sure. so that's the other thing is like that's why i mentioned kind of like the the podcast style vsl which i think would be more challenging to pull off because obviously you need two actors mm-hmm. two people could create that conversation mm-hmm. but the reason something like that could work is because we don't think it's an advertisement, right? It feels right. like we're listening to a podcast, and next thing you know, it's really we're a, watching it. Yeah, it's a Sunday yeah, morning TV it, show. Yeah. yeah, and all of a sudden now you're like, oh, it's I'm being pitched something, but right. I know I got forty five minutes in, like, oh, there's a yeah. buy now button. Yeah, <laughs> well, of course I'll click <laughs> on it now. Right. Yeah, I'll click on it now. I've been waiting for them to give me the content. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, open loop after open loop, and yeah. now here I am. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of those things to definitely be on the lookout coming into 2023. I imagine the. The first person that cracks that will see very quickly. Yeah. Um, Similar to in the past. So, oh, well, that thanks. I appreciate you answering that question. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I know, like, even going back to like even the, the style, um, mm-hmm. I think that I'm pretty sure that Brad's team kind of revolutionized this mm-hmm. was to do the full screen yeah, that was videos the, instead yeah. of the, the smaller. The smaller video setup, but just like to have it like yeah. bust out on the entire screen to feel like a movie. Yeah, a movie print, like you're you're watching something on YouTube, and you can expand the whole screen, and it just like it felt more cinematic. It felt more yeah. um, impressive. And you can't get distracted as easy too. So you can't, that's right. <laughs> Watch more of the VSL. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it does. Yeah. Especially, I think that the one that blew me away was the vertical on mobile. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, because most of us we don't scroll this way, you know, unless mm-hmm. you're insane and no one could see that I went, you know, horizontal. <laughs> right. But yeah, when you have it vertical on your phone, it takes in. That's also not something you're used to seeing, so it already throws you off. Um, and then you know you don't have to put on your reading glasses to watch it, which right. knowing our target demographics, <laughs> right. it's important to remember. 
That was, yeah, it seems like, too, like a big shift over the last year or so. It's just been like every scaled VSL I see now has a some sort of trusted character in the front. Mm -hmm. Right versus just the beep 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 and then go into the story or the big scream and the accident like those are still kind of there but it seems like everything's got you know a actor a doctor or someone that's you're immediately connecting with mm -hmm. versus that big scary thing yeah, yeah. and that's a uh, kind of continuing through do you see like do you think going from the TSL piece coming back a bit is your the way you kind of promote your discipline yesterday with the blogs and kind of like using that format, mm -hmm. does that trend to convert better to TSL? Cause they're going from long form to long form, going from blog to a click to a long form. Not necessarily, especially okay. the, like the way that we do those creatives. When we have the blog intro, it's just, it's usually like two sentences and then a link for the blog and then a headline that we pull from, it's usually the subject line of the, of the offer itself. And then the creative, um, I would actually say, I don't have the data in front of me, but I would say that that method actually doesn't work as well okay. with the text-based sales letter, at least not yet, versus a VSL. Um, I don't know why, but not everything works with that methodology anyway. Not not every offer works with that two-step format because um, like, we always see like something that's like if something works really well as a, as a like as a standalone solo, then we'll try to do the blogs above it, but it doesn't always work. Gotcha. You know, so we haven't I haven't been able to see that data play out that a text sales letter will work. They're probably just like, I read enough. Didn't I, didn't I right. need <laughs> can't someone just talk to me for a second? <laughs> <laughs> well it is funny, like we you know, we have our blog, which is a, a, a nice part of our business, and then then we'll have if it's a if it's one that we promote enough, you know, like people love baking soda and we'll have <laughs> we'll have ads kind of strewn out like strewn through the the article itself and at the bottom we'll have whatever the hottest offer is so for a while at the bottom of those all of our blog posts it was research you know and then job when you say at the bottom is it like a banner image is it just like a, um some of it's email creative and some okay, of it's yeah. a sometimes it's a banner image yep. um, but we usually try to segue like you know before you go you know sure. and then just plop the short email creative in there and i still approve all the comments on the blog posts okay. because I like to see what people are thinking and it's comical too. <laughs> uh, it's some of the things that you get people also, saying um, in real quick. Cause uh, the, I think a large portion of our audience, right. in this direct response space is going to hear blog. Like right. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why would you even bother with a blog? Yeah. Most people don't know. I would say like 95% of the people, that we interact with, including close friends that are very successful, mm -hmm. don't understand it. No, like, like this doesn't make any sense. Like, can okay, you just explain <laughs> like maybe like the overall business model you're kind of running. Like with like how how is the blog working in your overall channel? So it's two steps. So we have um, we get revenue directly from from the blog. So at Google AdSense, we've got ads kind of strewn about there. We've got lead gen funnels on there. Um, so that makes us a decent amount consistently every month because we pump it's all all the traffic that goes to it is from us there's no such thing as seo for anybody in our, in our space anymore it's just google has gamed <laughs> the entire system you have no chance if unless you're especially in the health space unless you're webmd or healthline you're not going to get in top 10 pages of google so all the traffic that's going there is coming directly from us and that's and so, like, sorry, when you say from you, that's from your email list, from ads you're running. From, yeah, so yeah. from yeah, so from our, our main internal list, um, we will do like four emails a week. We'll have a blog a, a blog component to it. The forty to forty five lists that we manage, same thing, um, and then all of our paid email creatives as well. Most of those will have a blog plus ad format. Okay. So there, that's one revenue component is just the blog itself from the ads on it and the AdSense, the Google AdSense that's on there too. Um, but then also it allows us, it has allowed us when we find a hot offer that works, um, we can run the same creative for months, sometimes years longer than anybody else can because it doesn't get burned out because we have different blog posts that we can put above. Oh, I see. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. um, like I always like to go back to research just because I'm nostalgic for that because it was so hot in 2020. Yeah. And like, that was, that was like the, that was like the easiest time to come up with email creatives. Like this blog plus research, this blog plus research, you know, it was like, <laughs> we just rotate through. I'm like, I know this is going to crush. I know this is going to crush, but we were able to use the same creative and same two creatives for that ad specifically when everybody else had burned it out. Mm, okay. Just because we had a different subject line, different from names, and a different lead, 
and then kind of funneled into it. And we would typically, we still do typically get higher open rates, higher click counts, because the, it's a unique, like, we test that extensively, subject lines from names, that, that's, that's kind of our thing. So side note, it really bugs me when people steal them. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's another, the other component too, is it allows us to capitalize on a hot offer that has a really good creative for a lot longer than anybody else can. Like we had, we had a creative for a, a Gundry offer that we ran for four years, three years, cool. you know, and they themselves stopped running it after like five or six months because right. it didn't work anymore for them. But because of that methodology that we had, it worked for us for years. Same creative, nothing changed except for <laughs> the lead, the intro into it. Right, because you can repurpose your blog content mm -hmm. a thousand different ways. Yeah, yeah we have, mm -hmm. God knows, I mean, we have, there's probably 40, 40 blog posts that we have that we know are going to get really good open rates. What does the team look like managing that? Do you have content writers? Do you have, like, a, how do you manage the hierarchy of your blog? Um, it sounds a little different than just like, I'm a blogger going to push content out. Hoping right. It's, it's, yeah, it's a little... be because all of the traffic that's coming to it is from, mm -hmm. from, uh, from us. We don't have to worry about all the other things. So we have one main content creator and she'll pitch me ideas. And sometimes, you know, I'll see the ideas and I'm like, yeah, that's a really good one because you know, it'd be like seven reasons for this. And so we can pull different things out for a hook for subject lines and from names. And then sometimes I'm like, nah, that doesn't like, you and I understand this because we're passionate about health, but nobody else understands what the hell you're talking about. So don't write, like, don't write, don't write that one. And then other times, yeah, like we're very close with Paleo Hacks. Mm -hmm. you know, um, Mike owns Paleo Hacks with along with Dave Sinek, and then we have other companies that we're partnered on too. That you know, so we all have our own kind of individual blogs. And if we see something, like if we see an email from Paleo Hacks for something for their blog or that went to their blog that did crazy open rates, then we're going to take that and run into all of our lists. And sometimes we'll just plop that article onto our blog itself and then give a link back to Paleo Hacks or Apollos or Alternative Daily or whoever gotcha. we're you know, borrowing it from so then we can capitalize on, on it even more. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's super smart because every business out there is creating content in some capacity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But then to put that into that blog where you could monetize it, put it as a research source, it's all there, right? Mm -hmm. So when you need to pull from multiple places, and then I just love the idea of using that then content to essentially, not mask, but keep from just solo creative. Because when yep. it's in your face all the time, you're forced to make a decision how many times you're gonna accept it. Yep. But I could read the blog and, and consume it whenever I like to. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to kind of have it live for so much longer. So I, I think it's and, brilliant. And there's, a, like, there's another component to it too, it's like, it, it makes the reader feel a little bit better. Like, oh, mm -hmm. like I'm getting something Quick instead of just being yeah. instead of just being hardcore pitched another VSL or something else. Like, there's there's something usable. There's something digestible that I can have, even if I'm not going to read it. It's still like there's. I think it just triggers something in the back of their head. Like, oh, this makes yeah. me feel good. Do you find you have a I don't know what the right verbiage is here, but do you find you have like a lower churn rate on your email and subscribes and yep. stuff compared to other people? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely lower lower complaint rate, lower unsubscribe rate. And that's always something that I pitch to people too, like when we're going to start to manage their list. And I talk about our methodology if they don't understand it, you know, and some people don't like it, like, oh, well, you're stealing clicks from us. I'm like, no, first of all, no, I'm oh, making you a ton you're of money. your blog content into yeah. their email yeah. promotions. Yeah, like, no, yeah. I'm making you a ton of money. Stop it. <laughs> um, but then I'm like, but I'm like, listen, we've got all this data. Your unsubs are going to be a lot lower. Your complaint rate is going to be a lot lower, which means your deliverability is going to be a lot better. Plus these subject lines are a lot better. Like it's like, just give me two months. And then if you still don't like it after you've received two months of, of payments, then, then we can have another conversation. It's also, I wanted to say this too, like it's not an, it's not a simple thing to do. Like, you know, yeah. people that are listening to this, like, oh, I can create a blog and come up with these ideas and this, that, and the other. It is like, it's a, it's, it's kind of a conglomeration of a few different minds to come up with these things and because mm -hmm. we understand marketing we understand what people want in the space and then to come up with the content or have somebody else write the content and then test you know this is you know we're talking over a decade's worth of marketing experience in the health space to come up with these ideas like it's not it's not something that people are just like, oh, I'm going to create a blog and yeah. I'm going to start doing this too. Yeah. Like, well, it's smart because you've you built a moat a little around yourself too, right? Yeah. I see like the people who just make an offer 
and it's working great and then it fatigues and then they're like what do i do next right. <laughs> they're kind of stuck right or someone rips it and it does it better and then they're kind of trying to figure out their next move mm -hmm. i find with any i kind of came from content marketing before direct response marketing so i've got a little bit of a penchant for it and close to my heart but the space seems to feel like it's not worth doing because it's can take longer right mm -hmm. but when you, you're describing it right when you can model it into your direct response campaigns and actually have it build up and support the ad buying the email creative all that pieces actually makes everything flow a lot better for that customer journey mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's fascinating thank you for sharing that yeah. it's it seems like it really does create stability in your business mm -hmm. because of yeah that. definitely you, you have uh, you could suffer through a lot of other changes that other businesses really, really struggle because so so much of the resources that you spent time in, you own and have control over. Yeah, so. which makes it even crankier when they find out that somebody rips off. Yes. Or, yes. Or, or which stuff. I think transitions to a great <laughs> last question, which um, I think we even had this last time, but is we need to go to Ed's Cranky Corner <laughs> and talk about pet peeves. So, like a button for this. Yeah. A little <laughs> noise. Yeah. Yeah, but some Ed's Cranky like, Corner. <laughs> yeah. Bring um, on the cuss words. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is the time in the show when Ed takes off his <laughs> key, PC mindset, his filter, and says, here's what's pissing him off and he'd like you all to stop. <laughs> Take it away, Ed. Right. <laughs> well, I just alluded to my biggest one is thievery. Um, you know, and that's that's happened. A, it's happened a lot. It always happens a lot. It's it's just kind of a thing that you have to deal with in this space. There's a lot of unsavory characters that don't. You know, they think, oh, I'm working. I'm working from home behind my computer. I don't have to abide by any of these other social norms. Social norms. <laughs> yeah, I can just steal. <laughs> Um, so you say that, steal, you just mean rip and copy, like I'm going to copy paste this into my thing. And, yeah, yeah, so like we've had a few instances where, uh, and I'm dealing with one right now, where people ripped off the entirety of our blog. <laughs> like oh. they, they had somebody go in and just copy paste literally everything. So our blog posts, our content, uh, the ads that we had on there, the banners that we created, uh, everything. And then they started using it as their own. And the only way we could find these things is because I have, I have a few different like secret email accounts that I use to keep up, like keep an eye on, <laughs> on the industry as a whole, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I sign up for I sign up for everything. I've done test purchases, and so I, I just get everything. And so you know, I'm like, oh, this is one of our emails, and I'll open it. Like, nope, that's not <laughs> that is our email, but that's not our page. So yeah, we've had that happen a couple of times, and I'm dealing with one right now that did the same thing. Um, you know, I've had people do something similar where they'll see what we're doing and they're like, oh, this looks kind of cool. Like, it's obviously working for them, so we're going to try it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so they won't directly 100% rip off one of our blog posts. They'll rip off the email creative word for word, but they won't rip off the blog post directly be to, but they'll like paraphrase it. So it's not, yeah. it's technically not copyright infringement, even if we could go after them. So well, copyright you, infringement, but in college, as an English major, you would be thrown out, right? Exactly. You get, ex <laughs> you get like expelled. It's still, in still college plagiarism. For, for, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. still plagiarism. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. and then things like that. Obviously people are going to, people are going to borrow subject lines from names. People are going to borrow, you know, bits and pieces from an email creative. They're going to borrow, you know, components of a banner ad or a headline on a, or an image on a native ad, like, that's that's life. That, that that's that's what you do, and you just try to get better, and you just keep progressing. But the one hundred percent thievery, where people are just like, oh, I want this. I know, and I'm unapologetic about it. You, you <laughs> made this. I made this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. no, I made this. Like, no, you didn't. We made this. No, I copied um, and I pasted it. Yeah. Um, so that's always that's that's always my biggest one, and it's just because it, you know been doing it for so long, and you know put in all the hours, all the brain juice, all the effort to kind of get to where we are and then see people just blatantly rip off where, what you've worked so hard for. Where's the line for you? Because you mentioned it's like, there's the borrowing word, right? And then there's right. the yeah. hacking, where I funnel hacked it. There's the swipe. Like When, when does it come, when does it go from inspired, inspired by to Ned stolen. Scout and I rolling marking <laughs> to it's mine now and this is right. just, no, well, I that's just usually, ripped off the when name. When that happens, it's it like, yeah, when that happens, it's word for word. Yeah. Yeah. Stealing the subject line, stealing the from name, stealing the entirety of, of the email. That's where the line gets drawn. I've had people, I've had people send me email creatives for their offer that are like 90% the same mm -hmm. creative as somebody else's offer in the same niche that I know and I'm, you know, acquaintances with or friends with and I'll, re I'll, I'll reply back to them like, hey, I'm not opposed to 
to promoting this. But just so you know, this creative is either 90% or 100% exactly what I've been running for this person for the last three months. You know, and usually they'll come back, oh, it's a rogue copywriter. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't know what my copywriter did. They just they just went out on their own and I gave it to people. Like, yeah, for anyone listening right now, okay. that excuse is very expired. <laughs> <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> you can't Everyone blame rogue copywriters like, yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then sometimes people just need to be called out like, hey, stop being a dick. Stop stealing. Mm. Come up with your own stuff yeah. and test it, you know. And and I've, and then don't think that you're gonna you know fly one by somebody who gets 20, 30, 40 emails a day from people wanting to promote their offer. Like I see everything. You can't do that. Which brings me to my next cranky corner piece, <laughs> which was on the last podcast, uh, which I didn't bring up yesterday in our in the lunch and learn, which I should have for for all the account managers to hear <laughs> was lazy affiliate managers. <laughs> and you know there used to be people that would teach this and so now I guess I'm taking it upon myself to be cranky about it um, <laughs> and kind of go in on, on some people about it about you know there used to be an old adage that treat your affiliate like they're the laziest person in the world yeah obviously we're not lazy you know I'm not a lazy individual but you should treat me like I'm lazy meaning you should give me everything in the most digestible format so that I don't have to go search for things like don't send me a Google Doc for your offer that has five different email creatives and then make me ask you, which one is your best one? And I'm like, oh, well, you should be able to pick the one that's best for your audience. Like, no, you tell me what your best creative is based on your testing and then I'll run that. So yeah, that's like making things more difficult for your affiliate. You know, I always like to say, I, it, it's always difficult to try to explain to people what I do for a living that don't know the space. Like, yeah. oh, what do you do for that? I had, I had the conversation with the Uber driver on the way over here. What do you do for a living? Oh God. <laughs> I kind of even. I'm not even going to try to explain it to you because you're not going to get it. I just tell people drugs and they stop yeah. asking questions. Drugs. <laughs> okay. On the internet, not yeah. porn. It's okay. <laughs> like I like to tell people, that my job. I'm an internet marketer, and my job is to get clicks. Like that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get you. If it's an email, I'm trying to get you to open the email, to read it, to click on one of the links in there. Hope you know. And then, if it's a text-based letter, scroll through, click again and keep clicking until you're done with the process. Like that's that's the whole goal, is to get clicks. If it's a native ad, get a click and the, it's the same process. Um, so that's my job, is to get clicks. I don't wanna do that if an affiliate manager or a vendor sends me stuff. Like don't make me click to go to your affiliate panel and enter in my ID to get a link and then scroll through your endless amounts of nonsense you are asking me for traffic, you know? Yeah. You're asking me to send you free customers. You're not paying, like you're not paying for that. I mean, you're giving me as a commission, but you're not paying for a drop. You're not paying for anything up front. Make things as easy as possible. And then, yeah, you know, especially if, it, like I said, I, if I get 20, 30, 40 of those things of people reaching out about, you know, like, oh, we have a, we had a 40% boost in CVR. Or, hey, we have this new offer, or, you know, this, that, and the other, like make it easy. Right. Don't make don't make me click around and copy and paste stuff. Like you should be putting all of that in an email. And so I'll tell people like, oh hey, like I don't even look at Google Creative or Google Docs anymore. I'm like, like, can you like, yeah, sure, I'll take a look, but please um, copy and paste your best email creative directly in the reply. You know, with the link and everything. So it's it's usable, it's digestible, and I don't have to make me or make my team do a bunch of work that they shouldn't have to do like that's yeah. their that's the affiliate manager's job yeah now for just for this isn't just ed's cranky corner i've heard this from multiple <laughs> list right. managers and stuff right it's like yeah. you want to make it just as simple as possible let them get into their flow state with work make decisions quickly yeah and you'll probably rise to the top of your list right exactly. to promote if it's easy yeah if the, yeah. the easier it is the quicker you're going to get traffic right <laughs> and i think an important <laughs> distinction too is it's like because some people are like, well, I have a tool page. I spent all this time building an affiliate tool page. But mm -hmm. it's like, Which that's for different yeah, sure. types of affiliates. Mm -hmm. yeah. If someone's seeking your offer out, they're actively trying to find an offer because they haven't presented themselves as something that's throwing offers at them yet. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, th that's what it's there for. It's for them to do all the searching. They have to earn the right to, you know. But yeah, if you had a customer a, going, hey, I'm ready to buy, you wouldn't send them to the 40-minute VSL with yeah, no exit yeah. pop, right? Well, you're going to send them to the order yeah, for yeah. <laughs> yeah, versus okay. somebody when it's like yeah. you're at a situation where you're asking them to send for you, to promote for you. They've already made that decision. Make it as easy as possible afterwards. It's just, just different affiliates. And I think it is frustrating. There's been a couple times 
even working with clients where I'll be like make an introduction to an mm. affiliate and then they're like, here's my tool page and I'll just come in, here's the link in the create and right after <laughs> and like, it, yeah. here you go, bye. <laughs> like, you know, just, just to try and be like, oh, okay, gosh. And then afterwards, like, don't ever do that again. Like, yeah. just stop it, so. And then like, I have one more cranky thing. No, oh, I don't even know. I don't Crank even know if this is like. I don't even know if this is like a cranky thing. It's just something that I've, I'm kind of sensing and seeing on the horizon, of, you know, because supplements are the biggest mm-hmm. thing out there because of the cart values and it's easy, like like you, but it's easy to it's easier to scale mm-hmm. versus an info product. But it's getting to the point that there aren't like some of the people that are doing it, like they have they kind of stumble into really good copy, and it works, but they're not competent marketers from that perspective and I, I kind of sense that something is going to start coming down the pipeline to kind of rein in the supplements in the direct response world because they're getting a little bit too aggressive with their claims and they're selling a lot and they're right? selling a lot yeah it's you know <laughs> like if it's you know if it's talking about um alzheimer's like that's yeah for a supplement like that's really dicey and people in this direct response space like i don't care i'm gonna i can say whatever you want like no you can't you can't say whatever you want the fdc <laughs> you is know? a real thing yeah. the fdc <laughs> like, is real you yeah, can exactly. say whatever you want but there's some really bad there's stuff consequences yeah. to exactly and it's going to come back to the vendors it's not going it, to it's historically those things the affiliates are not the ones that get in trouble it's yeah. the vendor yeah. You know, like oh it's a rogue like it's like the rogue copyright <laughs> the rogue affiliate i don't know i can't tell yeah. they're like no you 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 have a headline that says that if you do this every night, it can prevent Alzheimer's. You can't say that, yeah. you know? Mm. Or you can, like I said, you can, but yeah. just be prepared <laughs> for when the government comes calling yeah. and, wants, a, and, and, yeah. and they take all, all your money. the money you have. Yeah, because that's all they want is all your money. <laughs> yeah. like, they don't want to send you to prison. They just want all your money. Yeah. They, don't do, they don't even really care if you stop doing what you're doing. They're just going to take all your money. Yeah. And now people always gripe about the compliance process here sometimes. It's like the copy reviews. It's like it's... Right. For everyone's best interest to write compliant copy, <laughs> right? It's, you know, there's cool people out there, right, who aren't copywriters themselves, mm-hmm. who can take aggressive copy and help you back into still conversion focused but compliant copy. Yeah, right. So it's like there's those people you can find to work with if it's just like, oh, this is way too risky to actually run at scale. Yeah, and obviously, just at the level that that we are with the business, we're obviously very aggressive in some things too. But I just, I, I just, I just feel I sense something on the horizon that that, that things are going to come down and some people are going to get dinged pretty bad, and hopefully not the, hopefully not like it was back in the day where all sorts of rules changes happen with ClickBank after people get kicked off. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that was like twenty what? That was, like seven was it years Bizop ago? or was that the no, it was Health Software Project? It was, health, it was right when I started. It was, it was like right? six and a half years ago yeah, or so. It was, it was Health Space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, oh, we're so kicking happened, these people off, and now we're going to have to do all these rules. I'll, for everybody I'll just clarify: else. we didn't actually kick anyone <laughs> off. It was just like basically rewrite your whole funnel. And people said, "Nah," <laughs> and kind of moved yeah. off. We'll yeah. move over to this platform instead. Exactly. We'll take that aggressive copy. Yeah, but it's funny because now it's all come back around them because. Well, it's funny that happened after that is eventually Google, Facebook, all kind of mm-hmm. had the same terms that we were following. So yep. everyone started writing that copy, what we wanted anyway. And right. So it's all, yeah, hunky dory yep. now. But yeah, it can be tough when you make a big change. Yeah. So I don't even know if that's a cranky thing. It's kind of a, a warning. It's a caution, it's a caution to, to anybody who might make it to this point in the, in the cranky podcast. Cranky heads cautionary tales. <laughs> yeah, cranky heads cautionary <laughs> Yeah, because it is difficult. Like if, it's, if you've been doing this for this long, it's difficult to not get jaded. Yeah. You know, yeah. the stuff you promote, you're like, this this is trash. <laughs> you know, but it converts really good. So mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm going to promote it. And then it's like, how much longer can I do that? It makes me feel kind of dirty. Well, but I it think, still makes me money, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's why I think it's it's funny. Sometimes this feels like, I don't know, this white whale that people always talk about. But as you continue to hopefully see this blend of e-com and direct response meet in the middle, I think yeah. that's where we ideally – all like it to see where slowly moving that way yeah where yeah. where yeah. the product quality and the claims like me and the consumers can consume enough information but then like be informed enough that you don't have to be overly aggressive and right there is definitely stuff. a happy medium yeah like, people are doing it they're yeah like, at scale yeah. yeah like we like one of the companies that we're partnered on up on us like we yeah we're not hyper aggressive in our claims for the supplements mm-hmm. like we just don't want to do that and so there there is a very there is a happy medium where you can be successful and not be shady mm-hmm. and not make aggressive claims. But, you know, people are lazy. So, yeah. yeah. yeah say, Emily Lark's one I always think of, too. Like, that's a great yeah. offer that it works so long, so it's good. It's, it's like just four or five years. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yep. And it is. It's very, it's not, you know, it's not like cure back pain forever, always, any right. situation, you know. 
refuse your spine. I don't know. So, um, yeah, well, Ed, I really appreciate the time. That was obviously amazing to have cranky corners with a cautionary tale for Ed for all the people out there, you know, fairy tales and direct response marketing. Um, but no, it was really, we appreciate your time, appreciate the questions. Tom's, any other questions before we go for Ed? Oh, a lot, but we've got a time limit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. 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 Well, awesome. Well, again, guys, we really appreciate you, uh, you listening and enjoying our second guest with Ed or second time with Ed. And please, one thing to comment with what you enjoyed about it. What other questions you would like to ask Ed too? Because um, who knows? He might be on here in the future for the third time. We'll have some questions queued up to ask him, but make sure to... I, it's to funny because we didn't talk about this beforehand, so now we'll find out <laughs> what we need to do afterwards. But, <laughs> but yeah, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. And until next time, have a good one. Happy scaling, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, guys.